In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here. That you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today, in the presence of God, we want to prepare for tomorrow, which is Sunday, by examining in a little bit more detail or perhaps with greater openness of mind and of heart, the gospel of tomorrow. Presumably you'll go to Mass and, or somehow assist at Mass and you'll hear uh, the words of Jesus and now we want to we want to do this well prepared, letting the divine words enter into our hearts. And this is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, where Jesus now addresses the chief priests and the elders of the temple. And he asks them, what is your opinion? And we can imagine he's asking our opinion too, because it's in the Gospel. A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, Go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards, changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave him the same order. He said, yes, sir, but he didn't go. Which of these two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. Other translations say, they don't say, you change your mind. Other translations say, you did not repent. And even after the words, it says, unless you repent, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So let's stop now in the presence of God and consider the scene of these two sons in the field. Because our Lord wants us to think about this and apply it to our life as well. He wants us to, to examine our heart. Which one of the two sons are you? One said very dutifully, very correctly, he seems to be the good one. But in the end, he was not good. He said, oh, yes, yes, I'll do it. But he doesn't go. He was not truly docile. He was apparently docile. He was apparently good, apparently obedient, but he wasn't actually obedient. He only seemed good and dutiful and obedient. He seemed like it. He had like, like a facade. Now, to say yes is a good thing, but it always has to be followed up by true deeds. To love God in truth, in acts, and in, and in deeds. Remember that story of St. Maria, who was kind of carried away by love for God and a real desire to love Jesus really a lot. He was, he was given the task one day of going to celebrate Mass in a convent somewhere. And in those days, I think it was with the Carmelites, the Carmelites would be behind a grill, like they were cloistered, so they weren't like in a cloister and they were separate from the world. And you could only, well, you could only see them behind like a, literally bars. And, and they were, they had this reputation of being super, super good and holy and sacrificed and, and uh, they prayed a lot. And he saw them and he was like, whoa, these are super holy nuns. I mean, these are, whoa. 
But then he was himself taken up with a desire to be holy himself. And as he was giving communion one day, he said, Lord, I want to be, I want to love you more even than, than these holy nuns. As he was giving them communion, I want to love you even more. And he heard kind of a rebuke from our Lord himself who said, he said, deeds are love, eh? not just sweet words. Eh? Deeds. I want deeds. Well, the other one, that, 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 that son who had first said nice words, good words, yes, I'll go, I'll go into the field, but didn't go, didn't give the Lord good works. But the other blurted out what he felt at the moment. He said, I'm not going to go, forget it, it's too hot, it's too many, too many things to do. You know, I, 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 have, I have a whole Netflix series to finish watching, right? It was like a brief spasm of distaste for the hard work, for the duty that his father proposed to him. For doing something hard, for doing some duty, something maybe unpleasant. And maybe indeed he was quite lazy, lazy about that, that idea of having to do a chore. Maybe your mom or your dad asks you, can you do this chore? Can you clean the dishes? Can you rake the lawn, the, the, you know, the garden? There's a lot of leaves falling. Can you start raking, like, right now? And we say, we may blurt out and say, oh, I did that last week. Yeah, but the leaves, they pile up. Well, this guy, though he said no at first, he simmered down after a little while, after his initial reaction, and he realized he was wrong, and there he did indeed go out. And he went into the fields and worked hard. And... Um, I would suspect that his father saw him go out, probably saw, oh, there he is, okay, he blurted that out, but he's a good boy. Mm -hmm. Surely he was not going to go out in secret. He just, he just repented. He changed his mind. He converted. Mm -hmm. And it's at that, it's that, that moment when Jesus speaks about those entering into the kingdom of God, those who are turning to him, like tax collectors, like St. Matthew, he was a tax collector. And tax collectors, they in some way collaborated with the Roman authority and they were despised by the, by the Jews. They were tax collectors. They were people working for the government and leading for many of the Jewish people to be impoverished or prostitutes. They say Mary Magdalene was maybe a prostitute. It's, some people say that. But those are the ones, the publicans or the tax collectors and the prostitutes that were turning and they were somehow responding to something that was deep within them. Something in their soul, a sense probably of sin that they wanted to repent from, that they wanted to turn away from. So Jesus is pretty hard against those who don't turn back he said, even when you saw it, you did not afterward repent and believe. Or you did not change your mind and believe. Those people who didn't change their mind, who are those people? Those are the people with hardened hearts who think somehow they're fine inside. They don't need to change, that they don't need conversion. That's from our Lord's perspective, are the people who are hard in heart. You know, a hard heart is a, a heart that is hard, that is not malleable, that can't be really changed. And so as we do our prayer this afternoon, we really we, we realize that we need some conversion, not only just once, but we need a permanent conversion. We always need constantly to seek to be better, to be transformed by God's grace. Always seeking to come closer to God because, why? Well, because we sin, because of that recognition that if we let our hearts be malleable, we will be able to adapt ourselves to God's will, to God's purpose for us. But if we are hard, if we are hardened, it's as though we will become kind of tone deaf to what God wants from us. Perhaps a way of describing it is that we could develop a kind of sincerity in our soul. Recognizing that we have sinned, 
recognizing that we have said the wrong thing or done the wrong thing. Maybe we externally said yes, but inside we said no to God. Maybe externally you look good, you look nice, you say, you know, you do maybe apparently you say the right thing, but inside you're not really praying. Inside, maybe you go to Mass even, and externally you're all good, but inside you're not even praying, you're not even making an act of love. Or maybe you go through routine. Sincerity of soul, to be sincere. You know, they say that sincerity, the word sincerity comes from the Latin, right? It's a, it's a common folklore myth that it comes from the Latin, from sine sera, sine cera, which supposedly meant without wax. Cera, cera is wax. So a lot of people said, well, when the Romans uh, would sell statues made of marble, sometimes in the little cracks and holes in the marble, they would put little, little wax in there and uh, it looked nice, but it was actually not a very good quality marble, so they would put wax in it. So a sign, supposedly, of a good piece of marble is the one that did not have any wax, that it was sine cera, without wax. So when you're sincere, so the idea goes, is that you were without wax, without pretense, without covering up little holes. You were just as it were. But in fact, Sincerity, the word sincerity, doesn't come from the Latin. That's what the etymologists say. It actually doesn't come from that. The word actually comes from, from the Greek, right? And it really actually means uh, sin and crescere, or one and crescere means one growth or growing together. Growing together together. Sincerity comes from growing together. So how do we apply that to ourselves? If the real meaning of sincerity is to grow together, well the Greeks thought of trees that sometimes would be joined together in their vulnerable parts where the bark was kind of thinner and they would grow together and uh, and so that would th those would be kind of the vulnerable moments or the parts of the tree and they would become one tree. They would become one tree. So for us, really what it means that is um, in, a, in a relationship <coughs> with somebody, it's this mutual willingness to let go of our own attachments, of our own will, of our own de desire, and recommit ourselves to our bond with the other, like the two trees coming together, recommit ourselves, in our case, to the will of God. That's what a person is when they are truly sincere. <coughs> Let's ask our Lord now to make us really recommitted to living out God's will for us. Because that's how we will really, that's how we will really grow. The, this, this permanent ability to grow. Crescere, that's what grows, that's what crescere means. It means to grow, to go higher, kind of go up like the inclined plane of one growth. And one beautiful way to do, to, to grow like that is to make sincere acts of penance or sincere acts of repentance. It's like a decision, a firm conviction not to sin again. To take on that invitation from God, like God the Father, to work in the vineyard. Jesus is asking you, go out into my vineyard and work there. What does that mean? Well, maybe it means working against our defects. Maybe it, work, it means to grow in the, in the virtues like kindness, like hard work, or even like apostolate. Or just our ability to listen and engage with others. That's what it means to go and work in the vineyard. And maybe we haven't always said yes to God, like the son who said, um, you know, no, I'm not going. I'm not going to work in your vineyard. But then we repent and we go. 
That's what we should do. We should repent now in front of our Lord. Repent for the times we said no and go. Go into the vineyard. But each one of us can identify what is that vineyard. What is the vineyard of the Lord? What is the virtue that I need to work on? What is the defect that I still have to work on? We all have defects. You know, we're part of the club. But everybody has some kind of defect. Maybe we get angry easily. Maybe we get very impatient. Maybe we're kind of like lazy. We don't like to do our work or our homework or stuff like that. That's why we have to be totally, utterly sincere when we go uh, to confession. Not only with the priest, of course, we are sincere with the priest, but of course, above all, with God and with ourselves. We have to be sincere with the priest, we have to be sincere with God, of course, and with ourselves. Well, first with God, then with the priest, then with ourselves, or whatever order you want to take it. And strictly speaking, the, the priest has to be con- convinced that there is true con- uh, contrition when he hears somebody's confession. For the validity of the absolution, he has to, he has to like, have a sign that the person is contrite. Right? That's why recently the Holy See put out a kind of a document about people asking for, for uh, anointing who were going to... Um, have uh, euthanasia on them. People were very sick and they want, they want to die before the time. And they said, well, I want to die. I want the doctor to give me a special injection so I die. But first I want to be anointed and go to confession. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The, the, the church said, no, like, no, because to kill oneself, this great gift that we have of life is, is, a, is a very obvious serious sin naturally those people are suffering a lot and it's very hard on them but they cannot you know continue in this they don't have a proper disposition for the reception of the sacrament of penance or or anointing or receive absolution if they continue wanting to do this this intrinsically evil act which is to take their own lives and now I don't suppose this is going to happen to you. You're not going to, uh, you know, undertake euthanasia. But we have to make sure that we kind of cancel whatever decision we have ever made to sin. We can say to our Lord right now, "No, I want to go out and go to your field and work in your vineyard, Lord. I want to work in your vineyard, even if it's hard." I'm too weak. I'm, I'm, I may fall, but that's okay. I'll just get up again and keep at that vineyard. Today, we commemorate the famous uh, French Jesuit, Jean de Brébeuf, who came from France to, as a missionary to come and teach, um, teach uh, you know, as a missionary to teach the the First Nations hear the truth about Jesus Christ and Isaac Jog as well. Jean de Brebeuf was, was a, he was as, as hard as nails. Right? And he really gave of his life and they almost killed him. And in fact, he went back to France. He had all his, his fingers, uh, uh, you know, cut off when he was tortured. And he had to get a special permission to be able to celebrate Mass without fingers. Imagine he went back completely destroyed, and he came back pretty much like a vineyard, like like a vineyard, like like a hero, like a hero. But he wanted to continue in the vineyard of the Lord, and he went back. He went back to Canada, and that's where, well, he eventually knew his end. He was eventually um, martyred there, as was Isaac Jog, and many other uh, of the. Jesuit martyrs of that period. Some died in Canada, some died in the U.S. So let's ask our Blessed Mother to give us the drive to repent any, any time that we see that we've done something wrong and say, no, I want to go and work in your vineyard. And to try to see what does it really mean 
to work in your vineyard, Lord. Maybe I haven't uh, fully identified what that is. Sometimes the vineyard is just to be docile to what my parents ask me, to, to do my schoolwork, to pray, to be faithful to that. What does it mean to work in your vineyard? Maybe you can identify that in spiritual direction. What does it really mean? And if you've said, no, I don't want to work in your vineyard, now is a good time to begin again and uh, to go out, even though it's the heat of the day. And that's, that's really what it means to repent. And our Lord always gives us absolution, always allows, uh, forgives, forgives us, even though we may have said no at one point. He always receives us with open arms, just like he received the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son. When the prodigal son was on his way back, the father came running out and just covered him in kisses. And of course, that prodigal son, though he, he had left the vineyard, came back, was accepted, was given a big party, but then also he would go back and work. Our Blessed Mother will intercede for us so that we become true workers in the vineyard. Thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. that we become true workers in the vineyard. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.